Gracious and loving God, we begin with gratitude for the abundant gifts of your love, mercy, and compassion revealed to us this stewardship season. May the gifts of our time, talent, and treasure be a sign of our gratitude for all of your many blessings. Amen. In September, we began our stewardship journey with the story from 1 Kings of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. If you recall, the widow of Zarephath was near death from starvation when Elijah asked her to use up her last little bits of flour and oil for a meal with Elijah. She overcame her desperate fear of starvation and faithfully did as she was asked. As a result of her act of faith, there was more than enough. Our stewardship theme this year, more than enough. Today we end our stewardship season with this story from Deuteronomy. Israel is on the verge of entering the promised land and their long journey from Egypt. After 40 years of wandering in the desert, the Jewish people are on the verge of arriving in the promised land. It has been a long journey from bondage and oppression in Egypt, and they are now about to receive the fruits of liberation and freedom. In gratitude for deliverance from captivity and their imminent arrival in the promised land, Moses reminds them of their journey and gives them these instructions. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, the Lord God, have given me. Place the basket before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you and the Levites, the priests, and the foreigners residing among you shall rejoice in all the good things the Lord your God has given to you and to your household. Moses is instructing them in the spiritual practice of the tithes of their crops, the bounty of the land, as gratitude and thanksgiving to God. The tithe is not given to earn God's favor or grace. The tithe is given in response to God's blessings. Grace leads to gratitude, and gratitude delivers us from isolation and fear. Gratitude leads us to generosity toward God and gives and to all in God's creation, especially those who live on the margins of our society. One commentary also pointed out that this spiritual practice of gratitude always includes those who are at risk and cannot easily fend for themselves. Present at the ingathering of that first tithe were the resident aliens or foreigners, the strangers, the immigrants who have come for safe, safety, for sustenance, possibly driven there by war or famine. The Israelites learned that part of an appropriate thanksgiving for God's gifts of the land and its bounty is to share that bounty with the foreigners or immigrants in their midst. Later in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy expands on these instructions. 
when you have finished paying all the tithe, share it with the Levites or priests, and the aliens, the orphans, and the widows, so that they may eat their fill within your town. Full thanksgiving means that all must be full. If there is hunger in their midst, the complete intentions of God's gifts have been ignored, and thanksgiving is not complete. The final word of thanksgiving is justice for all. If foreigners and immigrants are our neighbors, children of God, then one commentary suggests the first word we say to the immigrants among us is not, are you legal, or what law have you broken to be here? Our first words must be instead, come, join us in the celebration of God's rich gifts to us. There is to be a sharing of the abundance. With these words, I remember everyone who drove into our parking lot this last Thursday and were warmly greeted by our volunteers and with bags of food. When everyone is able to partake of the Feast of Thanksgiving, then it is a genuine and true Thanksgiving for all. Finally, let me build on an earlier idea in my homily this morning, that grace leads to gratitude, and gratitude delivers us from isolation and fear and grows our capacity for compassion and mercy. This is another benefit of our stewardship practice. When you give thanks for all the blessings in your life, we grow our capacity for gratitude and compassion. It is safe to say we live in a very stressful and fearful time. One of the best antidotes to fear and anxiety is the practice of naming and giving thanks to God for all the blessings in our lives. In my experience, this form of prayer fundamentally begins to shift me toward an awareness of blessing and gratitude. I know this to be true. You may not know this about me, but I am the most anxious person I know. A genuine daily prayer practice of identifying those things in my life and in my world are what help me move from anxiety to generosity to peace. Let me give you a brief example. Often when I am praying with a person or couple after a particularly intense pastoral conversation, I will often begin by naming those things to give gratitude for. My experience is that naming things to be grateful for reintroduces the power of hope. A hope that implicitly reminds us of a God who is always present walking with us. Walking with us into every situation in life, sharing with us the power of God's love, peace, and serenity. As we conclude our pledge in gathering today, let us remember all of the ways that God has blessed us in this place. In yesterday's History Day, I heard again and again stories of gratitude for how God has blessed this congregation since its planting 70 years ago. The same God who blessed the widow of Zarephath with more than enough, the same God who led the people of Israel to the Promised Land, the same God who helped to plant this congregation 70 years ago and has walked with you faithfully ever since, is the same God who is leading you now 
and walking with you into your future. Amen.